So I'm here today to talk about TUF, or the Update Framework, um, and specifically how it can be used to secure distribution of more than just software. Um, I'm Marina. Um, we're in a company called Adira, and yeah, excited to talk to you all today. Um, here's a little bit more about me. Um, I do a lot of work as an open source maintainer, as well as a member of the, the CNCF community as part of the uh, technical advisory group for security. Um, recently graduated with a PhD in, um, which, with, which focused on kind of software supply chain security and a little bit of the stuff we're going to talk about today. And currently doing security research at Adira with some of these fantastic folks. Um, so here's what we're going to talk about today. So I'm sure a lot of you have heard about this whole software supply chain thing. It's, it's, it's very popular right now. And all those different types of metadata that you're supposed to have with your, um, you know, to use to secure your software supply chain. So instead of just having to distribute this one image to everybody who wants to use it, you now have all of this other information that's also super important and needs to be distributed to people as well. This includes things like SBOMs that talks about the dependencies of the software, things like um, attestations um, that talk about you know, who, who did the build process, you know, were those, were those machines hardened? Was, it, was the software signed? Um, VEX documents, which kind of go along with the SBOMs to talk about the different, you know, the different vulnerabilities that a, a piece of software might have. And these ones are especially um, frustrating because they do change over time, right? As many more vulnerabilities are discovered in old software, you need to make sure your VEX documents are staying up to date. And your policy that you use to verify to make sure that all those other things are actually um, what you want them to be before you deploy a piece of software. So how do we make sure that we get all of this information, all this great, useful security metadata, actually to the consumer of the software? So that's kind of the piece of it we're going to talk about today. Um, why, why do we have to talk about security of metadata distribution? You just send it over the network, right? You just you take it and you send it. So I'm going to talk about SVOMs just as, a, as an example, but this could be any of those pieces of metadata. So this is what you want. You want the software producer to make an SVOM. And for now, we're going to assume that the producer is, you know, doing this all correctly, they have a great SBOM, and, but we want to make sure that the consumer actually gets the same SBOM that the producer um, sent them. So the first thing that can go wrong, of course, is that somebody could replace the SBOM. And in the case of SBOMs, what could go wrong here is that if there's a dependency that's listed in the SBOM that maybe has a vulnerability that the attacker removes from the SBOM, then the end user won't be aware of that vulnerability, um, might deploy you know, a bad version of software, become be able to be exploited, and, and so on. There's also a few more subtle things that can go wrong. Um, for example, if the SBOM for a particular piece of software has changed, this is maybe more relevant for something like VEX than it is for an SBOM, but, right, but this metadata might change. You might have a V2 of the SBOM for the same version of the actual software. Right? And you want to make sure that the consumer is getting not just the SBOM for you know, FOO 2.3 in this example, but the current version of the SBOM for this piece of software. And similarly, the SBOM might change between, you know, FOO version 2.2 and FOO version 2.3. You want to make sure you're on the correct one. What about signatures, right? This, we have this great piece of um, cryptographic technology that can make sure that, you know, you know who something came from. So why, why can't we just use, just use signatures? So the, the first problem, of course, is that if something was previously valid, it will have an actually valid signature on it. Um, so if the SBOM for FOO 2.3 has changed from FOO 2.2, maybe a new dependency was added, maybe something was changed. Um, the FOO 2.2 will still have a valid signature from the correct producer, and this will all cryptographically check out because it was at one point valid, right? This is actually something that's good, except it's not the one you want, right? It's not the correct one. Um, and then there's another kind of more subtle problem, which is that how do you actually know who signed the thing, right? So somebody signed this fake SBOM. It happened to have been the attacker, but that's a valid signature, right? It just happens to have the public key associated with the attacker instead of the software producer. So we have this other problem where we have to make sure that we, have the, we need like a third channel, a third, uh, not a third channel, like a second channel, a secure channel, where the software producer can um, communicate with the consumer what the key they should be using is to verify um, the signature on this piece of metadata. Okay, so what does this all have to do with what we call the update framework, right? What does that have to do with software updates? Um, so we'll talk a little bit about what TUF is, and then we'll kind of go back to how this actually relates back to this problem of um, software supply chain metadata. So TUF is a um, secure software update and distribution framework that's designed to protect the freshness, consistency, and integrity of software. 
And what turns out is that when you're protecting the freshness, consistency, and integrity of software, all you, software is just a bunch of bytes, right? So you can replace that bunch of bytes with uh, software supply chain metadata or cryptographic keys or anything else that you want to securely distribute to people that, that works in, in this way. One of the cool things about Tuff is this idea of compromise resilience, where you assume that kind of lots of different things can be compromised, including the repository that's holding your software or your metadata, including um, developer accounts or developer signing keys. And um, what Tuff aims to do is both reduce the impact of a compromise, make sure that you know, any key is only used for the specific things it needs to be used for, and also allow for secure recovery in the case of a compromise. And we'll talk a bit more about that in a second. Um, OK, so I'm going to go very briefly over how Tuff works and to distribute this example piece of software, Foo 1.0. So you start with something that you want to distribute. In this case, we're talking about packages. That's Tuff's original design case, but we'll, we'll, we'll go beyond that in a second. First thing we want is content integrity. This is what signatures are great for, right? Sign the software. Um, and then you can know, you know who released the software, who signed it. You can cryptographically verify that. However, if you sign the actual, um, put the, attach the signature to the actual piece of software that you're distributing, or the actual thing you're distributing, what you do is you actually change the hash of what you're distributing, because it's now attached to that, has a new hash, which is annoying for a lot of reasons. If you are referencing images by hash, for example, this messes with that, or if you want to do multiple signatures, um, you can do it, but it's just a little bit awkward to do with attached signatures. So we're instead going to put that signature in a piece of metadata. Um, I think that'll be a, a trend that you'll see. Um, so we have a piece of metadata now that lists ABC, which is, for our purposes, that's the, that's the hash of Foo 1.0. And then we, we, um, we put a signature on that. And so, that, so that, that now we have some integrity of, of this. We still have the same problem we had a minute ago, right? Though, how do we know that A is the key that's trusted to sign foo? And so we add this idea of delegation um, in Tuff, where you can go, so, so this, this targets.json will list the public key that's trusted to sign foo. And of course, you still have another problem with it, which even if targets.json is signed, you need, you need to know where that key comes from. You could keep going forever. We're going to end here at root. <laughs> root is our, our root of trust. This is, this is the place where we um, determine the first set of trusted keys for everything. And because root is our, you know, our root of trust, you want to make sure that it's, it's actually going to be secure. And so um, we, it, there's also this concept in Tuff of multi-signature trust, which is not just for root, but is especially important for root, where you can have a threshold of signatures. So say three out of five of these trusted signatures have to have signed this. So even if two keys were compromised, it's still not enough to um, replace you know, all these delegations from root. Um, and, and of course, and these root keys, because they're the root of trust to the whole system, these are the ones that you want to be like most, um, most careful with. Use things like hardware keys and other things like that. If you are able to use hardware keys and stuff like that on root, um, you can use, you know, maybe easier to use kind of online keys and some of these other roles, um, but you can replace them as needed using the, the more trusted offline ones. So you can kind of make that trade off of usability and security. The next thing we need, of course, is repository consistency, right? As Foo um, 2.0 is released, and so in this example, we're shipping both 1.0 and 2.0, um, just for the sake of the example. But right, this Foo.json changed. And so how do you know that you know, we want this version of foo.json and not this version. So we need this idea of consistency. So we changed foo.json, so that's on v2. Targets is still original, so that's on v1. And then we introduced what's called a snapshot that lists those different version numbers of the different metadata files. And you'll note, by the way, that we don't actually list the version numbers of foo, but because the hash of foo is included in foo.json, this actually gives us the, the current versions of all the artifacts as well. Um, and of course, that we, we need to know where that is signed from as well. So let's put, that, put another delegation in from root. And finally, we want freshness, because even with this snapshot, we have this snapshot that includes you know, v2 of foo, but there was previously before this a valid snapshot that had v1 of foo. And so we include this thing called the timestamp that includes the current time, as well as a hash of the snapshot, and sign that as well. Um, and the reason this is separate from snapshot is mostly just a usability thing, so that you can update the timestamp even if the snapshot isn't updated, and it's just a much faster operation because it's a smaller, a smaller file. Um, okay, so this is how Tuff works for package distribution. 
um, what if we want to distribute not just pieces of software, right? Just a minute ago, we were talking about all this supply chain metadata. And so what you can do is you can, uh, the simplest version is you just add these signed by the same key or signed by a separate key to the end of, the, of, this, of this distribution tree. Um, and this, this totally works. This is totally a way you can do it. Um, you could also do some fancier stuff, though, which I'll talk about now. This is an example. Instead of using SBOMs now, um, I'm using this project called Intoto as an example. Intoto is a, a software supply chain security project um, that had a very, very basically, it creates attestations about different steps in the software supply chain and then makes what they call a layout, which is basically the supply chain policy about what attestations should exist and who should have made them. Um, so what this is doing here is it's kind of putting the Intoto root of trust, this kind of foo Intoto root of trust underneath a tough delegation tree. So we, we're ignoring kind of the timestamp snapshot root pieces of this. Those are still there. They're just not in this picture because it's, it won't fit on a slide. Um, so we're talking about the targets. And um, so now we have two different things that the targets is delegating to. There's a layout signer, which is in charge of those Intoto roots of trust. So it's a more trusted role, probably using offline keys and you know, doing some of those more security measures. And this defines those Intoto roots of trust and the software supply chain policy, what you call a layout in Intoto. And then there's an image signer, which signs our images, foo and bar, the actual software, as well as the attestations that were created while the software was being created. And then these little kind of lighter arrows, which I'm not sure you can even see on the screen, are just kind of where the, the layout is kind of referencing those attestations, which isn't an exact delegation, but they kind of, and then the end user can kind of use this all to connect it all and make sure everything happened correctly. And what's cool about this is not only do you get those tough properties of timeliness and integrity, for all of the metadata, the Intoto metadata, the um, images themselves. You can also connect the metadata to the images because you're distributing it all kind of together in one system. So if the metadata versions change and all of that, it's all kind of contained in the same system. And most importantly, you have a single root of trust. So even if you have the separate root of trust defined by the Intoto specification, you can kind of put that underneath a your existing tough root of trust, right? And just use tough to distribute those secure, those, that root of trust and those keys, as well as distributing the software. This just really simplifies what you need to securely distribute. We're kind of getting it all just down to this, this one small set of keys that we need to have a, a secure channel for. And then from those, you can, you can kind of derive everything else that, that you want to be using. And of course, you also get this property of secure recovery, right? Where anything that's delegating to something else is able to replace the key for that role. So if any key is compromised in any of, any of this part of the system, um, that can be replaced by something higher up in, in the delegation tree. All right, we're doing on time. Cool. So I'm gonna uh, switch gears a little bit now. Actually, I'll take, I, actually, we'll do questions at the end, I guess, yeah. So I'll switch gears a little bit now and talk a bit about the Tough Project, what it's doing. This is our kind of, um, one of our chances of the year to kind of catch folks up who are familiar with the project and what's going on, so. Some of this will be familiar to folks, but anyway. So the Tough Project, the main thing it is is a specification, right, that de defines kind of those diagrams I showed you earlier, how those delegation models work, what the rules are, that kind of thing. There's also a bunch of implementations in different programming languages for different ecosystems um, that have like, you know, slightly different purposes, um, as well as a bunch of different deployments. This is some examples um, that use it to distribute various things, mostly software, sometimes um, keys or um, supply chain metadata as well. Um, and then we have just some updates about what's going on in the project. Really generally, we have a, a website redesign. So for folks who, so hopefully if um, it'll be easier to kind of learn more about the project on that website now for folks who are new to it um, and it, you know, using modern web design stuff. So it should be, should be pretty cool. There's also been a big effort to do conformance testing um, between these different implementations of the project, which is super exciting because they're mostly developed by these independent, independent teams of maintainers who do a great job. But there are some projects, especially um, SigStore, that want to have different clients that use different programming languages but ingest the same tough metadata, which means that you really want um, these different implementations to be compatible with each other. And this conformance testing has been really great too, but because it's an essentialized place, um, it provides the opportunity to do kind of more extensive testing than some of the projects have done on their own. Um, and there's been a number of really cool um, kind of minor vulnerability disclosures and just kind of general 
um, features that were missing in different implementations that have been discovered through this process. So I think it's really kind of making the whole ecosystem of projects better. So that's very exciting. Um, the next couple I'm gonna highlight are a couple of our um, new pieces of tooling for TUF. Um, I think this is something that's really exciting that's happening right now in the TUF ecosystem is really improved tooling so that you don't have to actually understand that whole model that I just showed you before. You just have to be able to use the interfaces of these tools. Um, so these, these are the ones to be really excited about if you're looking to implement this today. The first one I'll talk about is RSTUF or Repository Service for TUF, um, which is a, an implementation that's, um, that kind of focuses on kind of larger scale deployments of TUF. Um, their kind of vision is to be this, for this one to be used for things like PyPI, NPM, these really big package repositories, which have both lots of downloads and lots of new uploads of packages. Um, and so it, can, it does a lot of cool, a lot of the kind of clever optimizations to, to make that scale work. Um, and yeah, there's some cool updates on that project as well. The 1.0 um, beta is released. Um, so it kind of has kind of the first set of, of core features to make this usable in production, including things like secure key management, integrations with SigStore, so you can do SigStore signatures instead of needing an actual key for all your developers. Um, all those optimizations for high traffic, like I was talking about, um, as well as a Helm integration and some other kind of usability pieces. The other cool implementation of Tuf that I'm gonna talk about, well, they're all cool, but this is, <laughs> these are the ones I'm talking about, um, is one called Tuf on CI. And where RS Tuf focuses on these really big implementations, Tuf on CI focuses on ones that are a little bit smaller and can be hardened just a little bit more because they have a little bit less upload volume, download volume. Um, and then Tuf on CI works with uh, kind of integration with these CI systems um, and has a really big focus on kind of making the, the, um, the signing operations easy to do and kind of that, that root signing and all of that has a, having a good story around that. Um, a bunch of new deployments of this one. Um, SigStore root signing, which was previously using their own implementation, their own kind of integration of Tuf, is now using Tuf on CI, which is very exciting, as well as the um, GitHub CLI as, which is part of the new attestations feature, that they're also using Tough on CI kind of under the hood as part of that, which is very exciting. So that should, you know, it, get a, really spawn some more innovation in this project, which is very exciting. Um, finally, join us. Um, we have a very active community and lots of different, lots of different projects. Any programming language you know, there either is or could be an implementation, and so that's very exciting. Um, this is a subset of them that, um, that I'm familiar with. And we're on the CNCF Slack if you want to ch chat with us more. Um, I think I left some time for questions. So thank you, everyone. Go for it. There's my, I think there's mics on the, the sides. So for the recording, if, if folks don't mind doing that. Yeah, it's just there. I think they're on. Hey, uh, awesome talk. Oh, Thanks. is it on? Yeah, it's on. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, I was curious. Um, this is, I'm still learning tough. Um, but based on what you were showing with like the, the root of trust, um, I was wondering, is there something baked into tough that looks like certificate transparency? So for example, if a root, uh, root of trust ever gets compromised or maybe even some of the leafs uh, within that uh, you know, root of trust, are compromised that there's some type of detection or you know you can go and uh, rotate those keys based on that observability um it's not built into tough anything like that um i think that the, the focus of tough is really on the the ability to actually revoke keys rather than have monitoring of them that being said i think that because there's just the only things you would really need to monitor to to maintain this consistency would be the root of trust right and any key changes there or maybe the snapshot, right, which really shows how the versions are changing over time. Um, and yeah, you could totally put those into just an exist, any existing transparency log system and monitor them, kind of assuming the existence of, of monitors who actually are interested in looking at it. So yeah, it's definitely a, definitely a possible gotcha. Thank you. addition. Hey, great talk. So my question is that we have our own distribution channel for our software. So we won't be changing that. We just want to like ship SPOM at the station VEX data. So can Tuff just do that? And how's the integration outside GitHub? Because we don't use GitHub for distributing our software. We use oh. something of our own. So how's that ecosystem looking like? 
Yeah, so, uh, yeah, yeah I, I mean, I illustrated this kind of connection between the different things just to show how it can be done. But you really could, you know, skip the foo 1.0 in this picture and just distribute the attestations using TUF. Um, it's, it's, it doesn't really care what you're distributing. It's just kind of the model of, of how you secure it. Um, and as far as the GitHub integration, um, I think it doesn't really matter where the metadata is coming from. What's nice about the GitHub integration is, of course, you can get those kind of attestations and other things along the whole route. Um, but that's not the only way to do that, right? You can just make sure that you trust the output of any CI system, any build tool, and then sign that and kind of input, in, ingest that into Tuff at that stage. And you can still do secure distribution from that point. It's kind of just kind of depends on where along the supply chain you want to decide, like, you know, this is, this is the point where we trust it, and that's, that's where the distribution starts. And, of course, shifting left is always nice because that way there's more stuff that's verifiable, but you can do it at any point. All right, thank you.